Hi everyone, I'm thriller author J.F. Penn and I'm here today to tell you a bit about my research process and the ideas behind One Day in Budapest, my novella which is out now and available on all ebook platforms. And I promise there'll be no spoilers so don't worry about that if you haven't read the book yet. So the story opens as Morgan Sierra is returning some items back to the synagogue, Dahani Street Synagogue, which is the main one in Budapest. Now these items were uh, taken from the gold train, which was uh, a train obviously, that was uh, taken from the Nazis towards the end of the Second World War. So this is actually uh, you know, true and I love to in involve a lot of true stories in my books. So. The Dahani Street Synagogue is one of the first places that I visited in Budapest and when I went there in November 2012 for partly a research trip and also partly uh, more of a personal trip. Um, my husband is uh, half Hungarian and, um, and also Jewish so we were visiting the synagogue to have a look at his family history. So it was a personal trip, it was also uh, you know a deeply moving trip and what you can see here is the, the gorgeous um, Dohani Street synagogue um, which is you know in, in the kind of Moorish style, beautiful architecture and what was what was kind of kind of scary is that this window, the rose window there you can see, is actually where um, Eichmann sat as they you know sort of decided on who would go to the camps and who would stay in the ghetto and this was where the, the Budapest ghetto was so a kind of deeply disturbing historical area uh, and the tree there it's a, um, a weeping willow tree in silver that is a memorial to the uh, to the Jews killed uh, in the Second World War and behind there is actually a really amazing memorial to um, some of the righteous among nations who were the non-Jews who who helped the Jews during that time. So the Jewish history in Budapest is, is pretty sad and uh, you can see here a list of names and the, the graveyard there which is actually within the synagogue grounds, very unusual, is a mass grave for those people who died within the Budapest ghetto um, and are actually buried, um, buried there within the synagogue grounds and this is kind of you know, it brought home in a much more detailed manner, I guess, the, the deaths of, of the Second World War. It's very hard to imagine, you know, millions of people, but you can imagine that the thousands that are within these mass graves. So that was a really deeply moving uh, experience. Um, and also that memorial there is uh, the, sh the shoes you can see, um, is just some, some shoes cast in metal on the banks of the Danube. And that's called the Shoes on the Danube uh, Memorial, which um, is within the book, uh, I won't tell you how, um, but it is uh, basically a memorial to the people who were killed, the Jews who were shot by the Arrow Cross fascist militia uh, again in the Second World War and they were just shot, told to take their shoes off and then um, you know shot and their bodies fell in the water. So um, obviously this was this was not a, a happy trip as such. Um, it, going back into this kind of history is very emotional and when I was there I really wanted to tell a story somehow that would bring in this history and would kind of talk about the history of Budapest and the, and this community as well as the other people um, who've suffered which I'll come into in a minute. So it, it's, um, it's a very, I guess, a, a dark history uh, in Hungary. But but what was, what's kind of interesting is it's not just the history and this is where um, the ideas behind the book come in. So these are some some screen prints from the Guardian, which is a, a just you know a newspaper in Britain. Um, you know some of the examples and this is 2012. Um, some of the the news around Hungary's right wing neo nationalists and essentially in um, November 2012, which was while I was in Budapest, um, one of the Hungarian politicians actually called for a register of Jews in the country and it was just so stark a contrast to me seeing this um, this synagogue and the graves and hearing about what had happened you know in, in the 40s and then hearing news that was essentially what was happening before all of all of that um, and it just kind of in my head it was like well, well what if this could happen again? And uh, this this party uh, could very well uh, become the dominant party in Hungary, um, and it's not just Jews in the same way as uh, as the fascists in the past. Um, they also target Roma and um, other kind of undesirables uh, in quotation marks. So 
really interesting and you know shocking that there is this kind of neo-nationalist anti-semitic feeling um, amongst some people in in Hungary and not just Hungary of course it's, it's a worldwide issue but I, what I wanted to do with my book was kind of imagine what could happen um, you know if a, a party like this um, you know, got into power, what would happen? And so that that's the kind of political angle, but I think it's also, uh, it is a kind of religious angle, but this is essentially political. So that was that was the basis for the story. And then um, as I'm, I'm a travel junkie, I really love to involve, you know, kind of amazing places and interesting bits of, of history in my books. Um, and here's some pictures here of the Basilica of St. Stephen or St. Isvan, um, as he's known in, in Hungary. And this uh, you can just see in the in that picture of the of the shrine there that is called the Holy Rite. Amazingly interesting. This is the actually the Holy right hand of Saint Stephen. Now the, the story goes that in, in around a thousand um, AD Saint Stephen was the king of, of the Hungarian Empire at the time and he was dying without an, an heir to the throne and he called to the Virgin Mary um, you know lifted his right hand and said you know holy virgin um, look after the nation become queen of Hungary and look after them for me and that he died. But his right hand, this is over a thousand years old, this mummified fist, like cut off at the, the wrist, it's really, really cool, um, is there in the Basilica. And uh, again, in the opening scenes of um, One Day in Budapest, you will see what happens with the holy rites. But I love uh, relics, I think they're fascinating and, and the church is, is beautiful, so highly recommend a visit there. Again, a, a very important place in Budapest and quite stunning because, uh, Bu you know, Budapest is really kind of showing this dark history and uh, there's a museum now, it's called the House of Terror um, now and you can see they've even got, you know, sort of the big word terror over the, over the house, it's quite amazing. Um, but inside, and this is the tank inside and, and a wall with all the victims, this building, 60 Andrassy Way, was actually the headquarters of the fascist um, Arrow Cross and the fascist party, as well as then the communist party um, and some of the other awful things that happened to Hungary in, in the 50s. Um, so it's, what's so, what was so amazing to me or so distressing I guess was how many layers of suffering there have been in in Hungary in even the last 100 years um, and it, it's a fascinating history to look at and we think oh this could this is historical this could never happen again and that's why I wanted to write the story and um, but I really th this house of terror was was fascinating it's been um sort of recreated and kept in the same way and you can actually go into the the rooms with all the records and uh, you know fascinating place to learn about what was happening um, what was happening there and then of course uh, you know have to bring in Castle Hill that's a, a view from Castle Hill over to the Parliament um, at night obviously and um, that bird there is actually on the castle itself uh, it's called a Turrell and uh, I probably butchered the pronunciation, but the Turul is this um, magical bird from Hungarian myth. It represents power and strength. You might think of it, it's an eagle, but it's actually a Turul. And, uh, it, you know, it comes from the kind of the Magyar history um, and it, it can fly between the different worlds. And I wanted to bring in this sort of Magyar myth. Um, it, it's, a, it's really fascinating. So I bring in a bit of uh, shamanism and, and other things there. And under Castle Hill are actually these uh, ca a cave system and tunnels and a labyrinth, which unfortunately was closed to tourists, um, but I was able to research a lot of that um, on the net with videos and pictures and things. So you'll see how I bring that into the story. But essentially the, the whole city of Budapest has got this these layers of, of intrigue and you know historical facts and just fantastic place so I wanted to really bring the city alive in the book as well as try and talk a bit about the kind of political um, you know possibilities of, of a political future. Okay so that is One Day in Budapest, a thriller novella 
now available in ebook format everywhere. And uh, you can also check out the Arcane series, which is in print, audio, and ebook. You can also check out my website at jfpen.com, and I have a list, and you can get giveaways and all kinds of things. So, yeah, come and check me out. Thank you. I am thriller author JF Penn.